In the news tonight, Fiji prepares for lifting of borders. New test kits for isolated communities. And government assistance to continue despite criticism. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nunn. Pulunaka Fiji. The Health Ministry says it will not wait for the two-week buffer to reopen containment borders once Fiji vaccinates 60% of the eligible population. The COVID-19 vaccine only takes full effect a fortnight after an individual receives the second jab. Christiana Uluwai reports data is collected daily except for Sundays when there is no vaccination. The containment borders in Vitelevu can be lifted safely without the need for the two week as soon as Fiji hits the 60% threshold. That even when we achieve that, that 60%, there'll be a huge number of people that have actually had been fully vaccinated and two weeks, even when we reach that 60%. The Fiji Medical Association says the vaccination threshold is a national guide and should not be mistaken as scientific data when assessing Fiji's COVID situation. Numbers are guidelines uh, and there is no exact uh, science um, and uh, there are many, many variables in medicine. Dr. Munshi added that our safety can be measured by Fiji's high vaccination rate. Ideally speaking, the higher the vaccination coverage there is, the safer we are in terms of uh, being able to you know, contain most of the infections um, before we open up. As of this morning, the full vaccination rate was 1.8% below the 60% required to lift containment borders and move the curfew back to 9 p.m. Christiana Uluwai, FBC News. Meanwhile, residents in Wainandui are also eagerly anticipating the reopening of the borders. FBC News visited the area this morning and residents say they are optimistic of some good news any day now. Details with Josiah Nanunga. The past three months have been a challenge for this small knit family. Limited movement halted most of their commercial farming. We normally sell some flowers and other agricultural produce at the market. My family have to endure challenges during the lockdown period as uh, accessing the market and other essential services were made difficult. Now we're looking forward to the opening of the Wainandoi border. It's been months since I last uh, saw my family in the Mosi. We have been uh, staying connected via phone calls. I'm looking forward to the opening of uh, the border and easing of uh, various restrictions so that I meet my family members. Entrepreneur Eliezer Silimembao says containment borders and lockdown have been a blessing for some, while others are just itching to be able to move around freely. You may left your workshop and you have another challenges outside, doing farming, etc. It is now 14 solid weeks since the time when this Wainandoi border was assembled, leaving Lami, Suva and Osori as one containment area until today. Now, fingers crossed that very soon, these barrier gates and tables will be removed and the area will once again be a hustle and bustle, marking a restart to the usual travelling on public transport and private vehicles to and from the Western Division. Police continue to monitor the movement of people and exchange of goods at the border ensuring adherence to COVID-safe protocols. Chosayen Anunga, FBC News. The Ministry of Health is expecting more nasopharyngeal tests to ensure suspected COVID-positive patients can be detected early. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says they intend to use the test in isolated communities to carry out intermittent surveillance. Kritika Kumar reports. The Permanent Secretary says obtaining a reliable swab result is critical in addressing the development of severe cases in the communities. Nasopharyngeal tests that I can use in, uh, in, in some of these uh, isolated communities so that we can do intermittent uh, community surveillance just to look for any potential cases that may be sitting there. The Ministry is limiting the testing to high-risk groups and places of concern. If we pick up an outbreak at a time when it is uh, occurring in a, as a mild case in a, a symptomatic person, there's a greater chance that we can contain the disease before it gets to those who are vulnerable to severe disease. The Fiji Medicinal Products Board Chair says the nasopharyngeal test kits are reliable and are considered safe. 
these are the more reliable test kits. The other other ones that use only nasal swab, these ones are not as accurate. Yeah. According to the ministry, the national seven-day average daily test positivity is 16.3% which is on a downward trend but indicates a high level of community transmission. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Individuals who continue to criticize the government are in fact driving the state to, to continue to do good and keep moving Fiji forward. Speaking during Radio Fiji 1's Nailalakai program, Prime Minister Boring Mbaini Marama says continuous lies will only take Fiji back and will see innocent Fijians miss out on opportunities. Senya Nimboila reports. Prime Minister says the government will continue to provide assistance, giving examples of farmers, market vendors and other ordinary Fijians who have benefited. There are people who continue to say things to go against the government and its various initiatives and assistance. This will not let us down. It will make us even more stronger. Baini Marama says the government has prioritized the needs of people by putting in place initiatives to help Fijians bounce back during these trying times. We have assistance for those that need it. It also includes farmers. We have the FDB assistance for businesses. It's all part of the government's support to help Fijians. So if you are still stuck on the wrong side, make a decision. Baini Marama has commanded Fijians that continue to stay the course and believe in the government's work. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. And to tonight's COVID-19 update, Fiji recorded 128 new COVID-19 infections for the period ending 8 a.m. yesterday. 90 cases are from the West and 38 from the Central Division. There were no new COVID-19 deaths reported by the Ministry of Health in the last 24 hours. Fiji has recorded 48,916 cases since April this year. There are now 12,814 active cases with 35,272 recoveries. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 535. The vaccination campaign also continues. 569,931 people or 97.1 percent of adults in Fiji have received the first dose of the vaccine and 341,679 people or 58.2 percent have been fully vaccinated. The five most vaccinated areas are Mba, Rewa, Nanranga and Naitasiri which have achieved 100 percent first jabs administered and next is Nandi. And Choningata of Suva is fully vaccinated. He says this is not the time to be complacent. Upper head fishermen warned against island hopping and more fines for not wearing masks. Welcome back. As COVID cases continue to be recorded in maritime areas, fishermen given special licenses are not to trade among the islands. Fisheries Minister Semi Kuroi Lavisau says these fishermen have been given a maximum of three days out at sea, knowing the risks involved. Kelly Vadala reports. Fishermen are being monitored to ensure they return to the designated locations after their catch with no detours or stopovers in between. Normally, we would give uh, unlimited time, but at that time, uh, without COVID, they can get uh, resupply from the islands. At the moment, it's uh, restricted. There's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, infection now on the other island, especially in Esau and uh, Kandavu. Corilla Bissau says these fishermen, although fully vaccinated, still need to adhere to the COVID protocols. He adds, for now, fish supply is not affected. But most of the fish that, uh, that we have now in most of our urban centers, the bulk of it is from Bono Lim. Essentially, the past allows uh, or tries to help uh, uh, zero to minimal risk in the containment zones within the level. Police and Navy are also out in the maritime areas monitoring the movement of fishing vessels to ensure they abide by the regulations of their licenses. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. 102 public health infringement notices were issued for failure to wear a mask over the weekend. 
It made up the largest number of infringements among the 162 notices over the 48-hour period. 26 fines were issued for social gatherings and five for contact sports. Failure to comply with wearing of a mask in a public service vehicle recorded 10 reports. Failure to comply with orders pertaining to the consumption of liquor and kava also saw 10 reports. Breach of curfew saw eight fines, while one PSV driver was booked for failing to comply with the 50% passenger capacity regulation. The International Labour Organization is supporting a series of training and awareness aimed at strengthening efforts to combat child labour in Fiji. The trainings were conducted in partnership with the Fijian Ministry of Employment, Productivity and Industrial Relations. The sessions saw active participation and contribution from government ministries, employers, workers, labour officers and key stakeholders. It provides a platform to share best practices and to rethink strategies to ensure children are protected while Fiji is confronted with COVID-19. It also focuses on how existing mechanisms can be strengthened to ensure children transition to school with very little or no disruption. Diabetes is among the top three contributors to blindness or visual impairment in Fijian adults. Pacific Eye Institute consultant ophthalmologist Dr. Luisa Rauto says most people are unaware that they have diabetic retinopathy until the later stages. Kuroi Tandulala reports it's a complication of diabetes caused by high blood sugar levels damaging the back of the eyes. <laughs> Diabetic retinopathy is a progressive disease that takes several years to reach advanced stages. And that's the biggest challenge because people with diabetes, they may still see okay, but they have very bad uh, problems in the retina or the nerve lay inside the eye. Yeah? We always had uh, diabetes or diabetes eye problem or diabetic uh, retinopathy as uh, you know one of those uh, top three uh, you know in the country as our causes for blinding uh, um, disease eye diseases eh? the fiji society for the blind says most of its members progressively lose their vision due to health issues when we when they go out for screening at the same time they also provide awareness and if they find that they are having that problem, then they refer them to the respective eye departments. Early detection and treatment is key in preventing eye disease from causing visual impairment. We do have a screening program and if we pick it up early, we can prevent the blinding um, cause, the blinding effect of the you know, diabetic retinopathy. Yeah? So that's our aim for the for our screening program. Diabetic patients or Fijians at risk of developing diabetes are being urged to get an annual eye exam for early detection. Kore Tandulala, FBC News. Coming up in World News, lockdown eased in New South Wales. And later in sports, fairy tale return for Wallaby Quade Cooper. The Fiji Development Bank is putting a temporary pause on new applications for the COVID-19 Recovery Credit Guarantee Scheme. This is to allow the processing of the thousands of applications in the last 40 days. Chief Executive Salminan says they welcome the overwhelming response from both their existing and new customers. FDB has already helped thousands of Fijian businesses by approving loans to the value of $40 million under the scheme since August 2nd. Minan says the response from customers to this scheme has been remarkable, with an average of 300 applications received in a day. He adds uh, this pause will allow them to assess applications without compromising decision quality. A few resorts and hotels in Nandi have turned their attention to the weekend in anticipation of visitors traveling across once containment borders are lifted. Fiji's largest locally owned and managed hotel, Tana Hotel Group, has confirmed it will definitely tap into the Love Our Locals campaign again. Felipe Nicasso has more. Promotional work on the Lava Locals campaign for Tano Hotels has started and will intensify when borders are actually open. As I've said prior to uh, second wave, we have been offering a very discounted rate. We will go by those and if need be, we need to, we need to relook at further discounting rates to get people in and get some, some you know, leisure time. However, the hotel will be very strict in adhering to the COVID-19 protocols set by the Ministry of Health 
Preparations are also aimed at international visitors later in the year. It is really good news because if the international borders open, we have a window whereby we can train our local, uh, train our staff during our local campaigns to be ready for the international borders. The rate of the vaccination numbers have also been a morale booster for stakeholders in the tourism industry. But we hope that this date at least will be the date and uh, hoping that we don't have a setback or something that delays it. We have to slowly open up in stages. We have to test our protocols. We have to test our protocols at the airport. We have to test our, our protocols within the, the various resorts and the various tour operators. The main objective for industry players is to get their assets ready in time. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. Yeah, the local exchange rates are set early this morning. The Fiji dollar started weak, falling against most commodities we cover, only recording gains against the euro and the Japanese yen. On the commodities market, crude oil rose to just over $70 a barrel. Gold dropped to close at $1,789 per ounce, and silver was down at $2,372 per ounce. And we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank to give us the latest figures from the money market. Good evening. A quick look at trades on our local South Pacific Stock Exchange. More than 31,000 shares valued over $63,000 were traded in over 40 transactions last week. Following these trades, the SPX market value rose by 0.62% and concluded at $3.17 billion. On Wall Street, main indexes finished lower last week after data showed persistent U.S. inflation offset expectations of an easing in U.S.-China tensions after a call between China and U.S. presidents. U.S. producer prices increased solidly in August, indicating that high inflation is likely to persist for a while, with supply chains remaining tight as the COVID-19 pandemic drags on. The U.S. dollar started the week on firm footing. The Aussie was marginally stronger, while the Kiwi was slightly weaker. Tomorrow, U.S. will release their consumer price data. It is expected to show core inflation easing slightly to 4.2%. So let's see how market reacts to the actual number. But for now, that's all from your HFC Bank, Vinaka. The Matangali Mvuni City City Cooperative is collaborating with the Fiji Sugar Corporation to fully utilize natural resources for incoming generating opportunities. The cooperative from Gudakondrove recently participated in an awareness and founders meeting facilitated by the Department of Cooperative Business in the North. Members of the Matangali Mvuni City City Cooperative are working together to build an enterprising community. The Ministry of Commerce, through the Department of Cooperative Business, is encouraging resource owners to capitalize on their strong points to generate income. And that is the latest from my end, but coming up after the break, rising sea levels destroy farms. Stay with us. Welcome back. Food security is an issue for villagers in Daku Tailevu as their plantation and other food sources continue to be severely affected by rising tides. Turanga Nikoro Uraya Voetimbao says with water levels rising, they have no option but to look for other new locations for farming to cater for their families' needs. Voetimbao says the village has five floodgates to stop the inflow of water into the village. However, this pushes water into their farms. Climate change has greatly affected our plantation. So we are working to uh, get another floodgate near our village plantation to avoid the inflow of water during rising tides. We are also seeking assistance from agencies that can help us with this work. Temporary circumstances can't stop a mother from striving to put food on the table for her family of four. Family has been the driving force behind Premila Devi's struggle for the past seven years, having to shoulder extra responsibility after her husband passed away. Koroi Tandulala reports. The mother of three has been selling at the Nausori market for the past 20 years, trying to put her children through school. 
Life is only hard if you give up. I've been selling here for two decades and every day I return because I know I have a family to support and I want my kids to go to school. The 52-year-old says her struggle has paid off as she was able to put her daughter through high school and even through tertiary education. I'm happy that my sacrifice hasn't gone to waste. I'm content with what I've done and my daughter has even gone to university. Life hasn't been easy, but I am very grateful. Devi says the COVID-19 pandemic has not only affected her sales at the market, it has also forced her younger son to look for work during his extended school break. Times are hard and luckily my son got a temporary job now. Our combined income is sustaining us through this difficult period. Everyone is struggling now, but it's up to us to make that change and be in control of what we want to achieve. The Coronavia woman says her age will not limit her ability to keep providing for her family and set benchmarks for young ones in her family. Corita Antolala, FBC News. In Q&A tonight, Jeshu Lal speaks with the Consumer Council of Fiji Chief Executive Seema Shandil. Why are businesses not allowed to put the no refund, no return signs? Notices and clauses such as no refund and no returns are known as uh, exclusionary clauses. Uh, selling goods with uh, warning signs that states no refund, no returns, or goods cannot be returned once, uh, once purchased, right? This is unethical, this is illegal. This is also happening at some of our local stores. Some traders are not allowing fitting in the shop. So the person is told not to try on clothes and even if you buy it, uh, you're not allowed to return the clothes. So ma'am, I just want to ask you, is it the right thing to do? Uh, the council does not condone the use of such practices such as exclusionary clauses whereby it infringes on the rights of consumers at any point in time. Uh, however, the current COVID-19 pandemic has posed you know, unprecedented um, challenges to both the businesses and consumers. Is this no refund, no return policy a breach of consumer laws? It is illegal for traders to impose a condition that prevents uh, consumers from seeking redress. Uh, if products purchased are not of merchantable quality or it develops any other issues after a certain uh, you know, period of time. How many cases have been discovered by the council? Between 8 June to 26 August 2021, the council have uh, recorded 49 cases of businesses displaying exclusionary clauses, which is quite high. Let's join Jamie now for the latest in sports. Okay, and good evening in sports tonight. NSOs work hard on return to play protocols. And when N'Golo makes top 14 debut, this and more coming up. clock is ticking for national sporting organizations to submit return to play protocols to the Fiji National Sports Commission. The commission hopes to receive and begin vetting the first set of submissions by next week before putting it forward to the relevant ministries for final approval. Caroline Itavi has more. A strict deadline has been given by the Fiji National Sports Commission. I would like to have them in by the end of next week. Uh, so that we can advise the Ministry of Health that we have them, they've been checked, and then they can go up there to be further certified by the Ministry of Health and by the Ministry of Youth and Sports. The Commission has set up a plan to ensure that all national sporting organisations are in line with the framework. We're sending out and asking every NSO to forward us their list of registered vaccinated um, elite and their contact players and so currently we will want the name of the person plus their vaccination number. Fiji football is ready to make its submission tomorrow, confident that it'll have the national team in camp by next week. Putting together a document which will be submitted tomorrow to the PS Ministry for Sports. Uh, which will then be forwarded to the PS of uh, Ministry for Health for its final endorsement. 
Then if, if that happens, then the national team is likely to come into camp uh, by as early as uh, next week. So far, only shooting and golf have made their submission to the commission. Carlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Six weeks after winning an Olympic gold in Tokyo, and Chuta Wainingolo has made his top 14 debut for Toulon against uh, Toulouse in the France top 14 this morning. One of rugby's fairy tale stories was uh, written last night after Quade Cooper starred in Australia's first rugby championship win this season. Cooper sealed the deal after the siren, claiming the 28-26 win over world champions of the Springboks. In another match, the All Blacks continued its winning run with a 39-0 win against Argentina. The Fiji National Rugby League will be looking at fielding more local players if NRL players will not be available for the World Cup. FNRL Acting Chief Executive Don Latambe says one, their main aim is securing the Fiji Mbati players who are currently playing in the NRL, but adds they are looking at other options like pulling players from the Super League and the New South Wales Cup. Now looking at, um, at uh, a local contingent that we will have to prepare, domestic, prepare domestically and those who are in other um, competitions in the lower regions of the New South Wales and Queensland rugby and also those across the U any of the Europe tournaments. Uh, I know we have a good set of players who are currently playing in Super League. Basketball Fiji has used the lockdown period to upscale its referees and technical staff through virtual trainings. In cooperation with the International Basketball Federation, 17 referees were able to polish up their skills, ready for when players head back to the courts. Vinina Rakautonga with this report. The training allowed referees to have their questions answered in terms of officiating basketball games. And uh, we were given opportunities to um, uh, ask, uh, to personally ask uh, questions during the seminar. And um, uh, it was quite exciting because uh, they, uh, we actually had a chance to um, actually uh, ask uh, our personal questions to uh, and got to game changing. Referee Lania Tambaleono says although the pandemic has halted play, it has not stopped them from learning and becoming better at their role. We talked about uh, the, you know, uh, uh, this is something that we usually uh, face during uh, game like situations is the foul. And uh, uh, many of it has been amended. And uh, because uh, from time to time, like we, uh, we as referees want to um, want to be professional as possible during uh, uh, during games. Federation Chief Operations Officer Laipo Mao says the webinars were much needed. Focus has been uh, mainly on uh, capacity development and also on uh, governance. Capacity development, the sense that um, in partnership with our international body, we've been able to deliver. More online workshops are expected through the year. Venina Rakautonga, FBC Sports. To the NRL and Fiji Mbati centre, Wanga Blake assisted his Parramatta Eel side to a 28-20 win against the Knights in the first round of the NRL finals last night. Liverpool's Mohamed Salah scored his 100th English Premier League goal in their 3-0 win over Leeds this morning. Other goals were scored by Sadio Mane and Fabinho. Russian Daniil Medvedev denied world number one Novak Djokovic a calendar year Grand Slam and a record-breaking 21st major title. Medvedev beating Djokovic in straight sets at the U.S. Open tennis final today. In play of the day, All Blacks fly half Bowden Barrett's outrageous one-handed flick pass to Luke Jacobson to set up a try against Argentina last night. In our quirky sport of the day, equestrian vaulting, described as uh, gymnastics on horseback, the sport once featured at the Olympics. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in weird and wonderful, Singapore Zoo hosts the gender reveal party for pandas. This and more after the break. Weather today.
brief showers was experienced over the eastern and interior parts of Vanua Levu, Viti Levu with isolated afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. Now to the west, fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers. Eastwards from Pekhava to Suva mostly cloudy with a spot of shower or two. Now in the north, no major change from other centres. Places we will be checking out are Nandi, Rewa and Savusavu. Rewa recorded the highest humidity levels at 75%. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Moderate southerly swells. The next high tide is at 18 minutes past midnight. Low tide is at 6.38 am. Sunrise is at 6.06. .06. For tomorrow, more rain can be expected for parts of the larger islands. The outlook for Wednesday. Brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Our shot of the day. This picture shows the sacrifice and hard work of the frontline workers going far and beyond to vaccinate all eligible Fijians. That's the weather for now and it's back to Edwin. In Fiji and Pulse we ask, what's the first thing you'll do when borders are lifted? Firstly, I'm going to go and visit my parents in the west and also see my siblings and my family. I will go and visit my family in Rewa, Nisle Rewa. When the borders reopen at this point in time, I'm not planning to travel anywhere. But of course, as the vaccination percentage goes up, I might travel west. At the moment, I have no plans because my parents are in the vulnerable category. But uh, once the borders reopen, we'll take a look and see what happens and then we'll decide on something accordingly. Gender reveal parties are all the rage now and zoo animals are getting in on the craze. Recapping our main stories, Fiji prepares for lifting off borders, new test kit for isolated communities and government assistance to continue amidst criticism. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM to our poll question. Last week we asked, will you get your child vaccinated when vaccines become available for those between the ages of 12 and 17? 56% answered yes. This week's question, are you looking forward to international borders opening in November? Visit our FPC News website to take part. And remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos, fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via social media. You can also download our FPC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mother Manda.